This is a 1935 Royal Model O, and it's just a portable typewriter. It doesn't have a name other than it's just a Model O. And um, 1935, can you imagine? Wow. And it looks beautiful besides a few minor nicks on this particular one. The black glass enamel is in great shape. Uh, it has the original glass keys on them. Um, so pretty. This particular model, it's nickel plated and it does not have a tab on it or a paper guide. So it's a, it's kind of a, it's, it was more of a budget model. The one above it, just below it, retailed for $60 originally and this one retailed for $49.50. So that's quite a bit of money back in the 30s. But so it was a good working, good little typewriter. Um, probably a lot of journalists use this because it's so small and easily portable. Okay, let's take a look at it. Right here, um, just like every other typewriter, your carriage release is behind the handles. And so we're going to release that. You can hear how well that bell works. Okay, this one doesn't have tabs and the margins, sometimes these flip over. This one doesn't, but the margins are going to be... Um, right underneath this plate right here and you just press them and move them to where you want them to be so i'm sliding it it's like a sliding scale and this one slides pretty well okay so over here is um where it's going to determine if you're going to advance a single that's single this is double okay and this is going to be your paper release most likely right there Okay, let's open this up. Inside, you're gonna see your ribbon. This has metal spools. I doubt they're the original ones, but they are, and they could be, um, but they're the metal spools. If you need to, you can put in universal ribbon that will work. So when you do switch them out, you just pull them up and slide them in and then make sure, you can see the guide right here, make sure they're threaded properly through the guide wires. And you can see up close photos on our Etsy shop of how to thread it through. Okay, your ribbon reversal is going to be right here because on typewriters, when you get to the end of the spool, I don't know which way are we going here? We're going this way. When you get to the end of the spool, you just reverse the direction. There we go. go so you reverse the direction because you want to keep using up the um, ink on your ribbon so when you get to the end some typewriters will kind of just lock up others the um, they won't lock up but your fonts gonna start getting faint that means your ribbon has stopped and you're now pulling tension on it so you'll start to punch a hole into your ribbon you don't want that to happen so as soon as either the typewriter locks up or the font gets faint you need to stop and reverse the direction of your ribbon or if your ribbon is spent, then put in a new one. Okay, so, and then right here is where you change the color of your ribbon. Touch control is right here, and this just determines how hard, there you go, you want your tight bars to strike your paper. All right, let's go ahead and practice typing on it. So the paper, because it's a this is a very small typewriter, the paper is barely going to fit on there. And that's probably why you don't need a paper guide, because there's just really one way to roll it in here. Okay, I'm going to put the bar down. Okay, let's go ahead and type in again. No number one, because they just didn't use the number one. They used the lowercase l. Uh, Okay, so if you look at one of my other typewriters videos, we talked about a floating shift, which was pretty common on Smith Coronas. And that meant the floating shift moved the escapement, which the bars down here, that's the escapement. Otherwise, shifts will move the carriage, which is pretty common. And I just wanted you to see the difference if you want to go back and look for, um, let's say, a 30s or 40s model of a Smith Corona those usually have what's called a floating shift where the carriage doesn't move, but the escapement moves. But this has the normal 
shift and so the carriage moves with that. The keys are nice and tight. I like how they feel. This is going to be really good for writing cards or letters, short stories. I mean, you could probably even write a book on it, but it is a little, um, I don't know that I personally would want to write a long manuscript on this typewriter. You certainly could. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. And it will on um, any other typewriter. Ah, so the shift, there we go. I was pushing the shift lock the wrong way. The shift lock goes back, not forward. Um, uh, just the feel of it. I, I would probably use this typewriter for more special um, projects, writing projects, something that's going to take that I want to take my time and write slower on. Oh, but this does, does type nice. Okay, shift lock, and that this is on many of the shift locks. When you press forward, it locks it, but not this one. You push down and back. Okay, so that's why I'm having trouble with that because I was not pushing it back. Ooh, this is a beauty. You're going to love this. Let's try the red. There's a lovely typewriter. Oh, mistake. You don't hit two at once. Type. That right here. Great. The poetry. Letter writing. Germ. Oops. No margin release. Oh, there is right here. Journaling. Special writing project. It's gonna look great in your office or den or little writing nook. Um, and it is if you're part of a, a typewriter group, this is great to take because it's so lightweight and portable. All right, you're gonna love this. It's so cute and it works great. All right, I hope you like this video. Have a great day. Bye.